you have a K1, K1C, K1 Max, 3D printer from Creality, and you can't load the filament. It hits like this until finally you get it to go through, and then when you finally do, it doesn't want to go into the hot end. I'll explain how to fix that on today's Film of Friday. This video is sponsored by PCBWay. If you've got a Creality K1, K1C, or K1 Max, you've probably experienced the issue where you're trying to load filament and it snags, it resists, it won't go in, and it's very, very frustrating. It seems like it's hanging up inside this filament runout sensor, which is easy to get to on the K1 and K1C, but it's harder to get to on the K1 Max because it's inside the unit. There's actually two pieces to this. There's the top half, and then there's the block, which is actually the sensor. If we take it apart, you can see the sensor is actually mounted to a circuit board. Speaking of circuit board, let's talk about our sponsor, PCBWay.com. If you need circuit boards, you can get 10 pieces for 5 bucks or even cheap assembly service. And they have a Gerber viewer, so you can check out your board before you send it. Just get in the size, 63 by 43 here, quantity of 10, and it gives you an instant quote, 5 bucks, 10 boards. Plus shipping to the U.S. is 2058, so 2558, and I can get boards. So check out PCBWay.com if you're looking for circuit boards. Now let's get back to our circuit board. This thing has an optical sensor, and this arm actually blocks the infrared beam. So when you run filament through it and the filament runs out, it trips and blocks the beam, and that's what triggers the signal to the printer that you're out of filament. Now the other half of this shell has these brass guides which guide the filament through the center and through the wheel and the sensor arm. And it goes through pretty easily, so when I put this back together and slid filament through, it didn't hang up anywhere, so I don't think this is where the problem is. I think it's here in this extra piece. Now this piece actually holds the PTFE tubing that comes out of the sensor and goes into the extruder. And they line up nicely, but I found that when you insert the PTFE tubing, it may not go all the way through. And if it doesn't, that thing can be misaligned, offset like this. So when the filament tries to come through, it just hits the edges. And so what I found is you have to make sure you push that all the way through and make sure you see it on the other side. But even then, you still have that rough edge. So if you have filament that's kind of flat or you didn't cut it to the right angle, it's still going to hit that side as you're trying to get it in. But I found that even when you cut it at an angle and put it through the sensor, it may be curved and wants to hit and then comes out at the low side, which can still hit the edge of the PTFE tubing. So a trick that I like to do is take a quarter inch drill bit and by hand cut a funnel into the end of the PTFE tubing. That forms a ramp. So when you put the filament, even if it's flat, it'll slide right into the center. But what I found is it's best to push it through the coupling and then do the drill bit trick. Because if you try to input it into the coupling after doing the drill bit trick, it wants to stop halfway and then you create that alignment problem. The K1 Max, that coupling is at the beginning of the sensor, not after it. But you can still get that misalignment issue, which will affect things, but it's less of an issue. It's the output that you got to worry about. That's the one that needs the drill bit trick. Put that in place, and I found this greatly helps the K1 Max getting through that sensor. So now, even a flat cut, curved piece of filament goes right in. But then eventually it's going to hit up here, so let's talk about that. So the next area that we got to be concerned about is within the extruder. So I'm going to take this cover off, and we're going to get down into this motor. And if you press down on this, you take the PTFE tubing, shove it to the side. Now we can take this motor out, but we'll need a two millimeter Allen wrench. There's two screws on the side here, and then there's one on the other side. Take those screws out, and now you can pull this motor right out. And underneath it is this little blue piece of PTFE tubing. And what does it have? A blunt edge that we need to use the drill bit on. Now I keep calling it the motor, but it's actually a motor and extruder assembly. And this one is an older one because it's got the black coupling on top. The newer ones have a white coupling and it's much taller, much better. You can also tell if you look on the sides, there's a big gap on the old one and a small gap on the new one. The biggest issue with the older ones is it didn't line up. This thing wiggled around and the filament would hit on the gears. The newer one brings the filament in straighter and works so much better. 
Now you can replace yours. It's $49.99 for a motor and extruder assembly or $29.99 for just the extruder and use your existing motor. I'll put links to these in the description below. If you do decide to replace the motor, you have to take off the front cover. There's a screw on each side and then what you do is you push this chain link aside and then you can lift it up and pull it off. And then there's a connector for the fan. Just pull that off and set this thing aside. Now you can get to the connector. Use some needle nose pliers to pull this. It might have some hot glue on it, but that'll break away. And then you got to feed the wire through this maze to get it out. Now you can put the new motor in by feeding back through that maze, looping it around, and then putting the connector back in its spot. And once you've got that in place, make sure it locks in place because you don't want to have to do this again. Then you can just put the shroud back on, connect the fan, push it up to the pins on top, and it should slide right down in place. And then you put the two screws back on. Now let's get back to that little piece of PTFE tubing. Remember I said it had a flat edge? That's going to hit when the filament tries to come through. So same trick. Use the quarter inch drill bit and form a funnel. And once we have that, now we need to put it in, back in its place. Only we want to make sure it fits into the motor. So take the funnel side, push it in, make sure it fits, and then pull it back out and put it in its place, but make sure the funnel side is up. And now we can put the motor in. Slide the motor into place, and you should feel it snap into place. It'll be a little resistance, and it'll snap over that PTFE tubing. And then you can put the screws back in to hold the motor in place. And then you can put the PTFE tubing into the coupling, and you'll notice the blue thing is not needed anymore. So throw that away. Then the little cover needs to be snapped in place. I hate this little thing. It does nothing. But after this, we've got one more step. If you take the drill bit and drill a funnel into that piece that goes into the sensor, it'll make it a little bit easier to load filament. And now you're ready to load the filament. I still like to take the top off. You hit unlock on the extruder. And now it should be real easy to slide through the filament sensor and all the way into the extruder. I like to hold the PTFE tubing a little bit straighter so it goes into that tube nice. And when you get there, you can feel it kind of go right through to the nozzle. Lock it in, and you're ready to print. So I hope this helps eliminate the problems on your K1, K1C, or K1 Max. And I hope Creality is listening and fixes this problem in the design. And a special thank you to all my Patreon supporters and all my Thangs members. It really helps a lot. If you like what I'm doing here, maybe check out some of the videos popping up. If you want to help support the channel, Patreon is one way, or a membership at Thangs.com. And if nothing else, click on the logo and subscribe. I'll see you next time right here at Chuck Hollabuck's Electronic Products and Filament Friday.